Okay, in this presentation, I just uh, going to talk about terrorism here, and uh, in this part, I'm going to talk about the definition of terrorism and Pape's article, which you know, there's a book followed, and there's video, you know, there's other material, but mainly I'm looking at the uh, the 2003 article by Robert Pape. Okay, the definition of terrorism. It is cliche that at this point that you can't define terrorism. Of course you can, but we can't agree on the definition of it, right? And uh, therefore, the you know the technically the term the we would say the definition is contested, and almost. You know, there, a lot of the stuff on terrorism just starts with this discussion of how do you define it? And the author talks about how people define it different ways. And then the author goes to define it the way they want to, which means whenever anyone uses the T word, you've got to ask, what exactly do they mean by it? Now, what I am offering, and this is perhaps questionable, but I'm going to call it the preponderant definition uh has these four components to it right this is what makes terrorism in not i, I don't even know if i want to say most but you know kind of a lot right of uh, there's a lot of cool and, and in fact the u.s government terror you know the the terrorist center that that, that studies it usually uses this so um the four components are that there's an act or threat of violence so it's got to be violent right Terrorism can't be protesting, can't be peaceful protesting, it can't be political activity, it has to be an act or threat of violence. Uh, targeting non-combatants, and here is, is, is really a big one, that act or threat needs to target non-combatants. This is going to be a major dividing line in a lot of, for a lot of people. Uh, because uh, sometimes you don't attack civilian targets. There are a lot of people who are called terrorists who uh, nevertheless, their acts of terror were against military targets. For instance, the attack on the USS Cull, most powerful surface warship afloat, guys in a, in a motorboat come up, you know, almost zero chance of civilian casualties from this. And, you know, it's a decidedly military, it's a hard target and, you know, not civilians, right? Therefore, technically not terrorist. What about an attack on an embassy, right? Or, you know, that's a government attack. Even, uh, you know, when people like start trying to use the, the, the T word about the capital attack, well, it's not civilians, is it? It's an attack on the government. So that makes it something else. We have other terms, guerrillas, you know, insurrection, you know, uh, rebellion, you know, these things are, are terms that are available to use. Terrorism, strictly speaking, tends to stick to, uh, tends to be about attacking civilians, right? And, and in a lot of people's minds, but not universally. Marine Corps barracks in Beirut get blown up. It's a Marine Corps barracks. You know, it, it would have been valid to attack it with artillery. So why is it that a delivery truck full of explosives is somehow terrorism, right? Just because it's a suicide attack, right? We don't call the kamikazes of World War II terrorists. Uh, you know, so, I mean, this is, this is, uh, where we get into issues, right? Because a lot of people want to talk about Hezbollah being a terrorist organization and, you know, committing acts of terror against the United States to get it out of Lebanon. And it's like, is it terror or is it guerrilla warfare? Um, politically motivated. This is a big thing that we need to uh, differentiate crime from terrorism. And uh, this always became difficult with, with the FARC in Colombia, right? Because to what extent are they politically motivated or to what extent are they protecting the drug lords? Um, it also tells you that, you know, uh, kidnappings in, 
in various places that are for ransom, like in Mexico, where there's a lot, was a lot of kidnapping. And, uh, you know, we have the movie Man on Fire to give us probably a false impression of this, but, uh, you know, to put it in our head. Uh, and, but that is about money, right? That is not politically motivated. Therefore, even though it's an act of violence against a civilian, uh, uh, it's p not politically motivated. And finally, it has to be a non-state actor. And this is internationally a very uh, controversial thing, right? Because by inserting this, that we're not talking about states, well, that means that states can't commit terror, right? And the thing is, states can commit war crimes. <laughs> you know, I mean, that's absolutely, we know that. Um, but it kind of lets out, if you're a state and you commit an act of violence against non-combatants, technically not terrorism, but a lot of states don't like that. And that's actually, you know, uh, when you hear Iranians talk about terrorism, they're gonna talk about state terrorism, right? And they're gonna be very big on that, that the United States and Israel conduct all these things and do, you know, um, and Iran's gonna say, you know, hey, look, you know, you guys blew an airplane out of the sky, the United States. Right. Why is that? You know, you say it was inadvertent, but, you know, I mean, just because you're a state doesn't make that not terrorism. Right. And uh, so if we blow a plane out of the sky in retaliation, what's what's the diff? Right. You know, um, and so and I don't make any comment on that uh, at all. Uh, I could. But uh, uh, it, it but I, I think the point is that perspective means a lot here. And what somebody else does is tends to be less excusable than than something you do, uh, and uh, that's just the, the the you know the way of things. So, the big point though is here's the definition, right? There are things that you will find that people will want to uh, people will want to violate, and they will consistently violate one or more. Of these things when talking about things and you know and in fact we do like i say you know hezbollah the marine corps barracks in 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 uh beirut uh the coal technically hey when you you know the plane that crashed into the pentagon valid military target right uh, it's a headquarters and uh now there are laws of war issues that were there that wasn't a war i mean but that's not terrorism right you know according to this definition whereas blowing up the twin towers absolutely you know hands down an act of terror and yet we don't separate those two right um so for that reason you've got i always you know talk about terrorism and political violence and and there are different types and focusing on one versus the other you know it's I think is is less helpful, and that's why I really like Max Abrams. When we get to his stuff, he's going to talk a lot about that. But okay, so there is the uh, obligatory discussion of the definition of terrorism, uh, and so I did it in eight and a half minutes, which is not so bad for this kind of thing. Okay, Pape, two thousand three, um, taking the rational view of suicide bombing. Here's the R word. Um, what do we mean by rationality, right? And this is something as, as a scholar, which you all are now, uh, you've got to understand that rational means something particular and not be thrown off. You have the esoteric meaning of it, right? Where esoteric refers to being uh, aimed at an inside group, right? So the technical concept of rationality is goal seeking, right? And so we look at terrorists or any political actor as goal seeking, right? They're trying to achieve some objective through their actions. And, uh, you know, the rational view of suicide bombing is, is looking at it saying, okay, does this, it, it may seem irrational, the act may seem irrational, someone blowing themselves up because it's self destructive, but is it goal seeking? Right. And are you, you know, are you trying to achieve an objective with it? And how how are you doing at that? Right. And so Pape, this is what Pape does. And Pape um, looks at he, he tries to collect 
a database of all suicide bombings in a period. And he does. He looks at it. In, in a lot of ways, Pape's work is fairly descriptive. And the number one limitation of it is his scope. He is, is looking at um, the at suicide bombing. And suicide bombing in this case, he is coming at it from, I'm interested in this thing, this phenomena. And um, mainly, you know, it's not necessarily his dependent variable, right? And uh, they have, you know, it's, it's not, and in fact, I would say in, in looking at suicide bombing, you're left asking, well, what is the dependent variable? Are you trying to explain why people do it? Right. Or are you trying to is, is suicide bombing the cause and you're trying to see whether it's, you know, it's a means to an end. Right. And therefore, success of suicide bombing might be your dependent variable. Right. And it turns out to be what he focuses on. But in, in a lot of ways, he's also being descriptive of it. And, and there's a role for being descriptive. Right. So he talks about the things he talks about uh, is timing. He notices that. Um, Almost all suicide bombing campaigns in his data set are part of organized, coherent campaigns, uh, and they are not isolated or randomly timed events. And this is interesting, I suppose, and, and it is. I mean, it's it that they are that suicide bombing tends to be part of a campaign, and therefore it tends to be part of a bigger thing, I suppose. Um, but I'm, I don't want to add in stuff, but that's that's his point, one point. He also sees them as having nationalist goals, that suicide terrorism tends to be directed at gaining control of what the terrorists see as their homeland. So it has been used to largely to achieve a territorial goal, separatism, expelling uh, uh, occupiers, this sort of thing, right? Uh, and that's interesting. Uh, at target selection, here, in his, his point of view, he says that all these campaigns in the last two decades have been uh, targeted, have targeted democracies, right? And which is interesting, you know, I mean, that, that's a good observation, uh, but that's what he talks about in terms of target selection. And we're going to see with Abrams, Abrams has a different view of what the importance of target, you know, in Abrams view, it's going to be like, are you targeting military or civilians or the government or what? So, but okay, that's what paper, uh, you know, general findings. Uh, and here's basically his, uh, you know, his overarching view. Uh, and it kind of shows all the campaigns here. And uh, if we were to, you know, look at a lot of these, you know, when you look at uh, a lot of these campaigns, they're uh, they're really dominated by Hezbollah and Hamas, and then the LTT, the Tamal Tigers. Uh, they're the biggest suicide bombers in the bunch. Uh, then there's a few by the PKK, uh, and you know uh, that we have Al Qaeda at the bottom with a puny six um and rebels and you know various other things so here we've got kind of an overview and you can at least look at the data you know you can look at what he got there um paper the thing that's i personally i find annoying about pape is he's very positive he is one of the guys who says suicide terrorism pays uh which i put a question mark by and in fact, this is why I have you also read Max Abrams, and I think Max Abrams' work, uh, you know, very you know, challenges the implication here, right? This is an oh shit, these these guys are going to you know be able to take over the world because it works. And um, I would say though, you know, when you look at when Pape wrote this, and, and he started working on this after 9/11 and in 2003. And the suicide bombing was, oh, my God. Um, if we look back more like two decades, a better part of two decades later, uh, has it been suicide bombing that's been the problem? 
right? You know, I mean, Al Qaeda did that in 2001. And then um, there have been suicide bombers, but there's been a whole lot of other things. And ISIS, not really big in the suicide bombing. You know, ISIS has been more, uh, you know, their guys, do, you know, have they have done more traditional things like let's, you know, um, well, and and they haven't organized anything either, right? They've kind of been uh, a, a figurehead uh, umbrella organization. And so, um, you know, kind of the, the focus on suicide bombing is perhaps an, a product of its time. Um, Hezbollah, the success of Hezbollah is a big deal, right? That Hezbollah was able to uh, get the U.S. out and uh, that was a major, you know, that, that they've been successful with a lot of things. Uh, he looks at these campaigns and uh, counts 50% of them as successes, right? He says they succeed 50% of the time. And now the thing to know about Pape is Pape is his previous fame, claim to fame or his previous you know, big work was to study strategic bombing campaigns. And so he comes to this with this background of looking at the success of strategic bombing and you know basically armed coercion right and and in fact suicide bombing and strategic bombing are largely the same thing you go inflict pain on somebody in order to get them to do what you want them to right and uh you're not taking ground you're not doing kind of conventional military things coming and taking over the capital or anything you're just you know using violence um especially just the suicide bombing thing so um, that stuff, uh, is, uh, you know, when we look at that, uh, he says that, you know, coercion is generally only successful about 30% of the time. So hit from his point of view, 50, 50 sounds pretty good. Uh, I look at it and I go, well, that's ridiculous war. You know, when you look at warfare, uh, you know, Bruce Pointer to Mosquito, when he did War Trap, he, he came up with this statistic and it's been rolling around in my head. But, you know, historically, he said that people who initiate wars win two thirds of the time. Right. And that's pretty good. That's pretty, you know, that that the, sure there's a lot of miscalculation, uh, but that, you know, uh, you know and he, he kind of said, look, that tells you that war that was one of his arguments that war is ra is something that is overarchingly you know rationally calculated that people say hey they calculate their odds of winning and two-thirds of them win here we got 50 percent um and eh. but he thinks that's great because coercion only works 30 percent of the time so he thinks it's good he also considers pretty much any success any concession on the part of the target to be uh success and that's problematic, right? He has a, 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 a very, uh, a, he, he sees success. There, there, you could question, right? One thing you might want to question, look at the article yourself, but you know, is his definition of success a bit generous? Um, for, and, and that is Hamas is perceived as a success because they've gotten Israel to make concessions now and then. So, um, the thing that's interesting, and, and this is what's going to play out, right, is that uh, he noticed, he, well, he doesn't have a lot of variation, right? He's only looking at suicide terrorists, terrorism, which is a subset of all terrorism and political violence. And it is interesting to note, as you'll see when we get to Abrams, that because he, you know, he notes that the groups that use this technique are seeking limited objectives, right? That they're seeking nationalist objectives. Um, although in some ways his definitions, right? He says Al Qaeda's objective is to get the U.S. out of Saudi Arabia. I'm like, oh really? That's Al Qaeda's objective, not to create a caliphate, um, you know, and seek to you know, <laughs> do these things. Uh, I thought they were Salafists, you know, <laughs> that's the thing. But, um, you know, sure, sure, Hezbollah had a very different, you know, had uh, things. So there's, I have some questions here uh, about that. Uh, but as we'll see with Abrams, the, uh, the goal of getting an occupier out tends to be fairly limited. 
uh, and uh, often, e you know, often easier to, to achieve. And so there may be this uh, spurious relationship that, that the, you know, that it's not the suicide terrorism that works. It's the fact that the suicide terrorists just tend to be groups that have limited goals and therefore they are, are more successful. But also there's this thing of, well, you know, how are you measuring success? Very big question here. 